All right, all right, all right. I like to ultra enhance my modular buildings, and today I'm unveiling the fifth part of my boutique hotel. Greetings, my fellow question blobs of subatomic building blocks, mesons, fallen with plants, order of teal bricks, and as always, berserk for Legos. All right, all right, all right. this hotel slowly over a series of videos so obviously this is part five so if you haven't seen part one two three and four i definitely recommend going to watch those we got penthouse suites with the regular rooms we got a floor with an indoor swimming pool and we've got a restaurant there are details explanations the origin story how i came up with this whole design and even a review on the original set all those details you're only going to get to see in those videos now one thing to note is i'm building a lego city a tropical lego city set in the future in the year 2060 named paradisa city so all my builds are both tropical with lots of plants. I love plants. Many figures of Paradise City love plants. And everything else is also built with a little bit of futuristic technology, stuff you would see 40 years from now. But now, today, I'm gonna be unveiling the ground floor with the lobby, the El Cubo, and a little cafe. On top of that, I will also be showing the basement area. So first things first, we're gonna do a quick tour of the outside. Then I'm gonna open it up and then we'll do a quick tour on the inside of the basement level. Now you might be wondering, hey Hans, where's the entire hotel? Where's the upper floors? Well, you're gonna have to wait till the next video. Yeah, I know, I'm totally taunting you guys with all of this. But uh, next video is gonna be a full city update. You're gonna get to see the whole hotel fully assembled and in place in the Paradisa city. So I know this might be torture for some of you guys, but hang in there. The next and final video, when you see the whole hotel put together, all right, let's start with the left side of the hotel. Obviously, this is where the front entrance is, and we've got the steps that lead up to the top terrace right above the El Cubo. And of course, here's the El Cubo itself. So a few things you might notice is that El Cubo got expanded in size, so there's a lot more room for walking around and browsing at the different art pieces without it feeling extremely crowded, especially with the really famous artwork pieces that are in there already. The bar area, which I'll show a little bit more later on, has also been expanded. That horrible, <laughs> the original tree on the boutique hotel, Remember how terrible it looked? Yeah, well I fixed it. And I think it looks a lot better. Now this isn't exactly my first attempt at making palm leaves that kind of stick upwards. I've seen other people do it and I didn't really like how they've kind of done it, but I think it's kind of grown on me and I think the way I did it came out pretty nice. So these stairs here, I've changed them so that it fits my new protocol of stairs. And that is that every step height is no more than one brick sideways. So. On the original boutique hotel, only the first three or four steps were the sideways layout. And then after that, I went to the upright brick layout. For stairs, I think it's too tall for minifigures, especially considering a lot of seating surfaces are one brick tall or less. Now, every single one of these steps is built with the sideways steps technique. I made some improvements to this personal ads and post-it board here. And because my Lego city, Paradisa City, is set in the future in the year 2060, a lot of things are futuristic in the next 40 years. So this is actually a digital advert board. And basically a startup company came up with this idea to have digital boards all over the place. And then, and so people can use the app on their phone and basically create their own ads or bulletins or notifications for anybody that can pop up on these digital boards. And these digital boards will be distributed all throughout the city in common public areas. And so people walking by can see these digital boards. And of course there's a little touch controls right there for any maintenance or, or maybe you can walk up to this one with your phone and use NFC to either download or upload different bulletins that you like. Moving over to the front entrance, you'll notice that I'm using one of the original keys as part of the door handle. And I thought that was pretty nice because 
It makes it look like the ring on the key, look like it's uh, you know something you can grab onto and, and pull the door open. Now again, as I said before in, my, in one of my previous videos, I mean, this is set in the future in the year 2060, so keys are a thing of the past. They use NFC technology and smart home, smart key, smart lock tech to get access to the, to the hotel rooms. Another thing to note is the little design on the sidewalk here. Decided to come up with a little bit of uh, you know nice design using the two by two quarter circle tiles. Now, when the hotel manager commissioned the contractor to put in these tile pieces, they weren't aware that in some places there isn't a tile that's designed to fit in there. And so there's these little bits of gaps right there. So the hotel manager, he didn't know that. And when the contractor finished doing all the work and the hotel manager came to look at it, he was very upset that this wasn't a completely smooth surface like he was anticipating. So let's just say that the contractor got a an earful of complaints. But the work was already done, so if you're riding your bicycle across this, you might get some, uh, some vibrations. And then these little flower bushes right there, I decided to make them a little more natural looking. Now one thing to note is that I increased the width of the balconies from the original set. So all the balconies, the opening, are six studs wide. So when it came to the ground floor, what I decided to do was to use that alternating blue and clear glass on each side of the window frame. So these are four studs wide like normal, and then this is six studs wide, and then we've got three more windows that are four studs wide. And they line up perfectly with all the windows on the upper floors. So as I said in some of my previous videos, coordinating how the windows were gonna line up based on not only what's going on on the ground floor, but also what was going on with the middle floors as well as the penthouse floor. So there's a lot of back and forth. All right, so now we're on the right side of the hotel, and this is where I've got a Glass House Cafe. So this little cafe makes lots of smoothies, espressos, and coffee, and pastries, as well as delicious, savory breakfast goods. And just like the brand name says, Glass House, the whole building is pretty much made out of mostly glass. And a lot of that inspiration comes from And we got some outdoor dining tables right there. We've got a nice big palm tree right there. And apparently uh, one of the coconuts fell. So up here is where the plant vines and, and flowers create the sh shaded area for this terrace up above the Glass House Cafe. And this terrace up here is seating for both the restaurant, but people from the Glass House can also sit up there and use that space. And swinging around to the back of the building, it's pretty much the same. The main exception here is this is where the elevator is. I've now got an arch that goes over that that is 10 studs wide. And of course, you can see the gold accents in each of the window frames. So here we've got two studs wide, four studs wide, and six studs wide. Here I've got another new tree that I designed, which I really like. Now, one thing that helped with the whole coordination of this was that all the columns in between the windows were two studs wide. And when it came over to here, as if the hotel joined onto the El Cubo, as well as the glass house over there, I also wanted to have it two studs wide. Because of the angle of the building, as it comes over and transitions, I really like how it got split up here. So I was able to close off this gap, and then I'm using this column right here to split between this window wrapped around that corner. If I were to make another column to border this window, then that would have meant that the whole building would have gotten to 70 studs wide, and that would have meant that this here would have turned into a three stud wide, which really wasn't gonna work. Here's another new plant design of mine, and this is basically a very tropical, bizarre looking flowers that you would see only in, say like the Amazon jungle. So you've got the green leaves, and then it's got like a red flower, but then the red flower grows these intricate yellowish flower petals. All right, and now we're right back to the El Cubo. So now let's take a look at the first floor.
Okay, so before I take off the second floor, which has the restaurant and the dining area, and here you can see the flowers that are sitting above the Glass House Cafe. This is to show the grand staircase that's coming up from the floor, but also to show the hanging vines and plants that hang down into the first floor. So that's my grand staircase. And of course on each side of the grand staircase, you've got to have some nice tall towering plants with flowers on them. Okay, and here's a better look at the bar right above the El Cubo. And one thing I forgot to point out last time was the door that leads from the bar goes straight into the kitchen area. And this door is only for the bartender himself. And that way he can restock and get and resupply for on those busy nights when uh, he's got a lot of customers drinking, drinking a lot. And also at the top of the Glass House Cafe, you can also see the, the overhang with all the flowers. Now, one thing I didn't discuss in my previous video was how I made the overhang. And because the building is coming off at an angle like that, and then I needed to have the overhang go straight. What I did was I used these hydraulic pieces right there with just some bars inserted into them so that I could get the proper adjustment. And then I'm using this light pole right there to support the overhang. And then the flowers just go on top. So I really like this grand staircase and how it turned out. And it's pretty much the same as what was in the original set, but just turned into a grand staircase. All right, one last thing to mention, and something I didn't mention in my previous video last time, which I meant to do, but just forgot, and that is, how I was able to get these guys and then mount them upside down. So let me just kind of crack that open for you and show you how I was able to do that. So when you take a flower piece right there and insert it into that one by one with the bar on it, it sets up the exact position for installing this upside down. Now, if you were to try a one by one round plate with a hole in it, that wouldn't work because the hole doesn't have the right stopping point. And then getting this to set at the exact height would be difficult. So that's how I was able to pull that off. All right, moving over to the interior. So here's our front entrance. Coming right into here, and you can see that I changed the bottom floor design. And what I did was I ordered it with metallic gold pieces. This is pretty much the same base of flowers as the original set, but what I did was I just added those magenta feather pieces to give it a more exotic, tropical-looking flower. Now, the original set, there used to be a rack of keys behind the desk. And again, this is a hotel of the future, and keys aren't needed, so instead I've got a nice artistic design display with metallic gold, as well as the opalescent trans black. We got a super cool dude that was waiting to greet guests as they arrive. We've got a luggage cart that is fully autonomous, designed to hold two of the roll-on carry-ons as well as one regular suitcase. It's designed to go up the elevator right over there. We got a couch tucked into the corner. We got that little pixelated sunset picture right there hanging up. We got a flower in the corner as well. We got another one of those identical cart, but uh, this time it has somebody's wedding dress and the wedding dress has arrived early. Now I'm done building the hotel, but there is a possibility in the future that if I were to ever add more floors, one of them would be a large hall for wedding ceremonies or conventions or uh, meetings. And then what I would do is I would have a wedding in progress with a bunch of dancing and a lot of fun. So here are my bamboo-like plants, these big uh, plant pots. Whenever I do an open mezzanine area, I like to have plants that are just growing straight up through to the second floor. And that's what these do. So as you're walking up this grand staircase, you've got these lovely, lush, tropical bamboo-like plants on either side of you. All right, one thing you might notice about this elevator is that it is an old glass elevator. Yeah, the walls are completely glass all the way around. Except for the exterior wall, of course. I also made an entrance for the El Cubo, so hotel guests can also have direct access to the El Cubo right from the inside of the hotel lobby, which was not on the original set. So up here is the bar, and I'm using my famous cobblestone with a bunch of moss-covered cobblestones and little 
bits of plants growing between the cobblestones. Right there, we got we got enough seating for seven minifigures. I don't know where the bartender is at the moment. Actually, I need to get some more cooking and bartender upper torsos. Okay, cracking this guy open. So here's the El Cubo. It's got all the same art pieces, nothing, nothing new, it's just more spacious. So we got a full-size desk right there. We got two windows back there. So now the guests can basically have a little bit more walking room so that they can have a good look at all the different art, art pieces. Okay, swing it over to the right side of the building. This is where the glass house cafe is partially embedded into the hotel. I love it. And I really like it because it kind of symbolizes like this ice cube that is being melted into maybe like some hot coffee or something. Like the hotel is like hot warm colors and then the glass house cafe is a strong contrast and is a cool refreshing look and one's being melted straight into the other. We got more chairs and tables for hotel guests to relax at. And down here is one of my favorite builds, which is a grand piano, a futuristic grand piano. So we've got somebody playing the piano right there. And it's a nice sleek design, very futuristic as far as I'm concerned, which was the idea. So it's only one brick thick, nice and sleek and slim. I've got the metallic silver with black keys. We got a microphone. We got some digital controls right there. And we've also got a transparent heads up display for reading the music notes. So I love that piano. I can just imagine coming to this hotel after touring the city and it's kind of late in the evening. The sun hasn't gone down yet. And the whole lobby of the hotel is just wafting in this lovely music. So back out over here, we've got a gentleman that is enjoying a nice cocktail drink as he listens to the piano player. And of course, we've got this hotel guest that is also listening to the piano music. Now, some people only like to have one bathroom in their entire city, but I put bathrooms in almost all of my buildings. In fact, this hotel probably has the most bathrooms out of all my buildings. And underneath the staircase, and there's actually a bathroom tucked under the feet there. I can't really take it apart because, because of the stairs, it's not really removable. But we got a nice little archway right there that bridges from the elevator to the stairs. And underneath that is a bathroom. It's got a toilet, it's got a sink in there, and just enough headroom for a minifigure to stand up in. Now one thing to mention about the stairs is originally I just had them built you know, bricks and plates right side up. But towards the end, I recently came up with my new protocol for stairs, which is to only have the stair steps being no more than one brick sideways. So I had to re-engineer these stairs all over again. Now, most of these steps are still right side up, but in order to get the right, the right spacing, I'm using a lot of headlight brakes to get the offset. So every other stair step has that half plate offset. Alright, moving over to the Glasshouse Cafe, up at the very top. So again, this terrace up here at the very top is shared by both the restaurant during the evening time, as well as by the Glasshouse Cafe during the morning time. And if you notice, the Glasshouse Cafe is made with trans clear blue, as well as the opalescent pieces. So up here we got opalescent pieces, and then over here a lot of opalescent pieces. So it gives it that nice shimmer. And so inside the cafe, We've got more seating tables. So four more, two more tables with four seats. And then we got two tables that are right there at a bar, also made with the satin or opalescent light blue. Got some nice tiling going on. The front counter bar. I got those dots embedded into the window, which was something from the Ninjago City. We've got a bunch of pastries on display. We got a sink. We have a freezer cabinet as well as a storage cabinet tucked underneath the stairs. And then we've got some hanging plants. We've got a computer taking orders. Most of it's digitally through the phone, so people just come up and order through the app. Back there is an espresso machine as well as a blender with a pineapple ready to be blended. There's my blender. So again, we've got the square shape of the Glasshouse Cafe melting into the angular 345 triangle 
of the hotel. Boom. sometimes but uh, underneath there's a basement area of the city Paradise the city is a local city it has public transportation so that people don't need cars and it also has a underground network of autonomous roads for a lot of public city services like police and ambulance and shipping and delivery all that stuff so all the buildings where the underground autonomous roadways are have basement areas so that garbage trucks can pick up the garbage and delivery trucks can deliver packages and mail. So here are the shipping doors. Now, one thing I like to do with all my basements is try to borrow a little bit of the architectural elements that are shown on the building above ground. And so that's what I've done here is I've got the, I've got the medium nougat and I've got some clear windows and I've got the white columns that are bordering it along with the arches. And of course we've got a little bit of uh, burnt orange uh, brickwork. All right, so immediately when you get down to the basement, there is the elevator shaft, obviously, and there's some support columns along with a beam, and that's just to help support the building up above. Now, one nice little thing that I like about these doors is that they can't go past the halfway point. I have a little stopping mechanism that prevents them from doing that. And that was something I developed, and that was something I developed a long time ago for my hospital doors, because I didn't like the fact that the doors could slide all the way to the other end. Now here you see the elevator, and right in front of the elevator is a floor pattern. Like I said, on each hotel floor, there is a geometric design. And over here, you'll see a separate entrance for hotel guests. Yeah, that's right. So if you happen to be, if you happen to be arriving to this hotel through unconventional means, maybe like a limousine, or if you're a VIP, or if you're the president who requires top security, then you're going to be going in through this entrance. Or maybe you're about to be married and uh, you're arriving in a limousine. So again, cars don't really exist in Paradise City because the transportation system is completely awesome. You should definitely go watch my Hyperloop video where I discussed that at length. So yeah, this is a private or secure entrance or just an entrance that is uh, convenient for people arriving on buses or limousines, uh, that sort of stuff. Now over here, we've got an army of robots. So we've got some cleaning robots, uh, vacuums and mops, and they just kind of do their own thing. They can go up the elevator all by themselves. And they're just programmed to go out and clean everywhere. And just like in my skyscraper hospital, there are smart carts that basically are able to traverse up and down the hotel all on their own. Basically, you just load them up and then you send them off to wherever you need them to go. So if this is a bag of dirty bedding that needs to go to the laundry, then the cleaning people can just throw them onto this cart and it just automatically takes off and delivers the, the dirty laundry, the dirty bedding, down to the laundry room. Here we've got another cart that is holding people's luggage. Maybe they just asked the hotel to hold onto their luggage because they've already checked out or they haven't yet checked in. We've got a bunch of supplies. That green door, that is for the garbage. So we've got a garbage dumpster out over here. And again, this is one of those uh, smart dumpsters. I've shown this before in my Grand Emporium expansion. So it basically can go drive itself. Once it's full, it'll take off and go to the dump site. But yeah, so this is a slightly improved version of the one that I had in the Grand Emporium. I've got a little utility closet uh, right there on the side. And over here is the bike rentals. Yeah. So hotel guests, again, Paradise the City doesn't have 
streets for cars. I heard he's a city has like mopeds and motorcycles and scooters, electric scooters, electric rental scooters, little autonomous golf carts that can pick up people. So if you're going far, you're gonna take you're gonna take the hyperpod transportation system. But if not, you can rent these bicycles and you can travel the walkable city, but there's also like motorcycle scooter golf cart highways going throughout the city. So yeah, hotel guests can rent these smart electric bicycles. Alright, and then up here we just got some maintenance doors. I didn't build anything inside of there. It's all empty and hollow. Like the electrical panel, the battery backup supply. All the buildings in Paradisa City will also have, each will have their own water recycler and they can reuse maybe like 30 or 50 percent of the water that gets, which is something in the future well, with a lot of buildings using their own water recycling so that there's a lot of water conservation. Now up here, this is all hollow. I kind of left it all up. There's an access door right there, but there's nothing in there. That could be something I put more stuff in later on. But well, basically it could be like, you know, that's where the, the HVAC and heater units go or the water heaters and stuff like that. Underneath here, this is where we got an additional kitchen. So the restaurant has its own kitchen and then the Glasshouse Cafe doesn't really have a kitchen and that's where they do a lot of cooking. So this kitchen is shared by both the, the mezzanine restaurant as well as the Glasshouse Cafe. So a lot of the food prep work happens here in the early, early mornings. Um, so we've got a chef that is cooking up some, some poultry legs. We've got a large oven right there. And over here we've got a sink, we've got some food being prepped, we've got some uh, pastries being cooked. And these pastries are the savory kind. It's like a red muffin that has a hard boiled egg embedded right in the middle of it. And that egg is cooked to absolute perfection. And then people are just like, whoa, how do they, how do they cook a muffin with a, an egg with egg yolk? It's just absolutely perfect. All right, and here is the walk-in freezer. Yeah, or refrigerator. So inside of this walk-in refrigerator, most restaurants have large walk-in refrigerators. And this one has got, we got a couple bins in there. Ones with fruits, ones with vegetables. We got one with a bunch of meat in there. And here's the back entrance. So this is supposed to be like a white marble tiling, but it looks kind of boring. So I definitely think I'm gonna be improving it later on. Probably doing a lot of this black and white tile work to improve the entrance. All right, we got this nice classic limousine right here. You guys might recognize this as gift with purchase taxi. Obviously I expanded it. I didn't like the fact that it was only four studs wide on the body. So what I did was I took the body, made it five studs wide. And then of course the total overall width is six studs wide because of the fenders. It's a lot more reasonable, I think. So this could be a politician from a different country. So he's got diplomatic community. He's arriving to his diplomatic limousine. And over here, we've got some majorly famous celebrities. Maybe it's a musician. Maybe it's a very famous actor. And of course, you know, to avoid the, the public mayhem and all the paparazzi, they get to use this uh, private, secure entrance. Yeah. And by the way, this is my limousine, but it's been completely redesigned compared to the video that I last showed this limousine. I was gonna do another video on it, but it looks like I'm already kind of given a sneak peek of it already. Now nobody's gonna watch it. So even though this is a boutique hotel, in Paradisa City. It still has the very boutique feel and vibe to it, but it also has the grandness of a luxury hotel. It kind of balances that line between the two. So this hotel is now going to get placed into Paradisa City and, and I think you guys are going to be really excited to see what it looks like set in place of the city. With the size and scale of this building, it's going to be a significant presence within Paradisa City. And if you guys haven't seen any of my videos for Paradisa City, I got two videos. I've got one that explains my plans for building the city, and then I've got my Paradisa City premiere video showing the very beginnings of the city being constructed or coming together with the buildings that I have. I hope you guys enjoyed these two floors, and on that note, I'll catch you guys later.